Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to start the thermal energy unit. And so let's start off with the concept of what is temperature and, kinet uh, and thermal energy and kinetic molecular theory. And how are they different? So temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of so it's the measure of the average kinetic energy that's temperature on the other hand thermal energy Thermal energy is therefore the total amount of kinetic energy. How are these things different? Well, uh, the example I like to use is, say you have a match, a lit match, and uh, or a large block of ice. So the lit match, has a higher temperature but a lower thermal energy because it is a small match and even though the temperature is higher the large block of ice has a lower temperature but since there's much more of it, it can have a higher thermal energy. That is the total kinetic energy of all the molecules. Since there are more molecules, there's more energy. More thermal energy. So, um, so in terms of how thermal energy transfers from one uh, substance to another, solids transfer through conduction. Liquids and gases transfer through convection. And free space, you can have thermal energy transferring through radiation. So those are the three modes of transfer of thermal energy. Um, now, if we talk about the th three phases of matter and what thermal energy looks like in them, okay, so we've got a solid, we've got a liquid, and we have a gas. I'm also going to demonstrate this in the top corner video of my of my face so I can actually do a demonstration with my hands here. Um, a solid has the molecules connected to each other in a specific orientation. So this this what I'm describing here is description of thermal energy. in the form of the kinetic molecular theory. So if my hands here, let's see here, yeah, there we go. If my hands are the two uh, molecules, they're connected to each other in a fixed orientation and they are wiggling. That wiggle, the motion of those two molecules are the representation of the kinetic energy of the molecule. In other words, the molecules are shaking. The higher the temperature gets, the higher, the, the more quickly those molecules will shake. On the other hand, in a liquid, the molecules are still connected, but they are free to rotate about one another. 
So in a, in a liquid, the molecules may, they're still in contact with each other, but they can rotate about each other freely. And that, of course, is a higher thermal energy. In a gas, on the other hand, the molecules are no longer touching each other. They are moving about and bumping into each other and bouncing off one another, but they're not connected. So those are the three descriptions of the kinetic molecular theory in terms of the three states of matter. So the next topic is the equation for heat transfer. And this is going to be Q is equal to, that's the amount of heat transferred, it's equal to the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. This is an easy way to memorize this. You just say, quiet my cat. If you have a noisy cat, that's an easy way to memorize this equation, where Q stands for the heat transfer. In joules. And M is the mass in kilos or kilograms. C is the specific heat capacity and that the units of that is and the unit of that one is joules specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram Kelvin and finally delta capital T is the change in temperature. Now, change in temperature, remember, even though this is joules per kilogram Kelvin, the equation for relating Kelvin and Celsius, so the equation that relates Kelvin and Celsius is that Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. Now you might ask, well, do we have to change everything into Kelvin before we do delta T? And the answer is no. The units for this, because it's a delta, can be either Celsius or Kelvin. Either will work. Why is that? It's because delta Kelvin is equal to delta Celsius. You see, because the remember what delta is, delta is equal to final minus initial. So it doesn't matter if you add 273 to each side. Obviously, uh, Kelvin does not equal Celsius, but the delta does, because when you're going final minus initial, it's the same. It doesn't make a difference. So essentially, if you know the final and the initial Celsius, you can use Celsius. If you know the final initial Kelvin, you can use Kelvin. Either way will give you the correct answer because the change is the same. Now, if we move on, um, now that we know how much heat is transferred to raise the temperature of something. Let's do an example here. Let's say, uh, so here's a question. It says, how much energy is required to raise the temperature of one liter of water from room temperature 20 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius? So in order to do this, we'll use the equation Q equals MC delta T. But also, uh, we need to figure out what the mass of one liter is. So let us use the equation of density density is rho 
And that's the symbol for density, rho. And uh, it's equal to, density is equal to mass per unit volume. OK? Now, if we want to get mass, we simply multiply density by volume. OK? And one liter is a unit of volume. Now, the density of water, the density of water is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter. Okay, another another density that, uh, of water is it is uh, yeah no let's just stick with this one. Um, it's also we could say we could say or actually it's one kilogram per uh, liter, but that's fine. Either of these will work. Um, here, essentially, since we've got one liter here, we know that this is going to be one kilogram of water. So we can say, all right, one kilogram of water, because it's one liter, multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4,180, 4, okay? is the specific heat capacity. And now we go 100 minus 20. And when we do this, multiplication, so I'm getting uh, an answer of 334.4 times 10 to the power of 3 joules, OK? Or uh, it's equal to 334.4 kilojoules. Just out of curiosity, how much money does that cost if you use your stove or an electric source at approximately, let's just take a guess where we live here in Canada, it's about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That's how much electricity costs approximately. Now, how much is that, how much energy is a kilowatt hour? So one kilowatt, remember, uh, a power is equal to work uh, per unit time. Therefore, work is equal to power times time. So a kilowatt is a, a unit of power. That is 1 times 10 to the power of 3 watts, or 1 times 10 to the power of 3 joules per second, because that's what a watt is. 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second. Now, an hour has 60 times 60, 60 minutes times 60 seconds is 3,600 seconds. So if we multiply 1,000, 1 EE3 times 3,600 seconds, we get 3.6 times 10 to the power of 6. And that's in joules. 3.6 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. Now, that means this much energy, electric energy, costs 10 cents Canadian. OK? Therefore, how much does this cost? Like, for example, if you're making uh, some tea and you put on a liter of water to boil, how much money did it cost to boil to, to make that tea? Like one liter of water is a pretty average amount of water to boil on, the, on your stove. So therefore, we would say 
So to figure this out, we would simply go 334.4 to the power of 3. Well, that's the kilojoules amount I got from there. And we would divide that by the cost uh, of 1 kilowatt hour. And we would get, so that's going to give us approximately 0.1. That means it's 0.1 of, or 10% of 10 cents, which is equal to one penny. So it takes one penny worth of electricity to uh, boil one liter of water, which is really actually quite affordable.